Uncle Pete's Corner again, and today is October 25th, 5, well, it's supposed to be 5.30, but now it's uh, 5.38. So anyway, we, um, Pete, we're looking forward to getting your series going again. All so right, well, we're, we're going we're gonna to limp in with something fairly easy coding-wise. Uh, it, it took a little bit just to find out what coding I needed to do. Uh, what we have here is this is an e-commerce site we're working on. There's uh, a ton of electronic parts being displayed on this site, and electronic parts come with these PDF data sheets that the customer needs to see with all the technical information. And we wanted to display those PDFs, but not just as a PDF, we still wanted to keep them inside of a frame of our site so that we could have our call to actions and phone numbers and stuff on there so we didn't lose our, our branding and marketing of that PDF. So this is the end result of what we're, we're going for. We've got our contact information and a call to action at the bottom of the page. And then the PDF is actually embedded directly in the page. And as you see, the, the normal PDF viewer controls are there on that embedded PDF. So they can save and print and do all the normal things they do to a PDF. But it stayed inside a frame of our site with with our branding call to actions and so forth. So <coughs> we'll That's go down cool. the little I like that. I like that. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 the little thing, you know, when you working on e commerce sites, the the branding, call to actions, the marketing becomes stuff that you really have to keep thinking about and considering, you know, that uh, and and that's that's the reason for this is, you know, for this is a site that's trying to sell stuff and make money. So every little thing you can do that helps with that is, you know, money in the pocket. So we'll we'll go down the the little journey of of how the different ways to to accomplish displaying a PDF until we get to the final end product that you just saw. So if we run this page, we'll get a debugging error because somebody's been I that don't make a big difference. Okay, so we start off with, here's the absolute simplest way to display a PDF. It just comes up in the browser. Now, here's the issues with that. You notice we have now left my site. You know, we can hit the back button and get back over to it, but we've left my site. We have no branding, no calls to action. We're just showing them a PDF. So with the attention span of the American public, I have just lost a sale. So <clears throat> that's, that's not a great solution. But depending on what you're doing, if, if, uh, this is the option that I use generally when I'm displaying reports that I've generated. And it's a pretty easy piece of code. We look at the code for that. We're simply using the file display command. We're using the fdir function to find out the physical directory on the web server where this website lives. Then the complete dir function to make sure that we have the trailing backslash. The name of the PDF. And then that second parameter is the MIME type. And if you're not familiar with MIME types, you can Google MIME types and find out what the MIME types are for 
pretty much all your standard type documents. And that MIME type is what lets the browser know, oh, this is a PDF. If you have a PDF viewer, show it as a PDF instead of offering to download it. If, if the browser doesn't have an app to serve this type of MIME type, then it's going to pop up the, you know, here's a file, do you want to save it dialog. So, so you got to make sure you have that MIME type right. At, at this point in time, you know, the chances of running into a user that doesn't have a PDF viewer are pretty rare, so I, I don't think you have to worry about it too much with PDFs. So that's... that's is, is that a plug-in to, to the browser, or is it... Um... <clears throat> most, most browsers uh, have a built-in PDF viewer plug-in. Okay. Uh, I've... I, Pretty sure all you the so major you don't have ones. To test for it or anything, then. It just no, and, and like I said, if they don't have one, you know, they'll get offered to download it or whatever. Yeah. You know, but again, you know, if you've spent more than ten minutes on the internet these days, you've viewed a PDF. So, I don't, I don't think that, uh, you know, unless you're in a strange target market that is extremely untacked tech savvy, I just don't think you're going to have a problem with people viewing PDS. So <clears throat> the next option we have is we can go one step further. And this is that same PDF, but now at least I opened it in a separate tab so that I kept my site up and opened it as a separate tab. And this is actually the way I generally do reports. And the only difference between these two calls is this call, we change the destination to new browser. Where this one is set to self. And that's all it takes if you look at the actual code. It's the identical same code. So that's all it takes to cause it to open in a new tab of the browser. And, and I say open in a new tab, but technically it depends on the user. If they've got their browser set to open in tabs or open in windows. Uh, by default, most of the browsers anymore are set to open tabs, but if, if they have it set to open new windows, then this would have actually spawned a new browser window like that instead. But that That's something that you just don't have control over and I guess at the end of the day really don't care about. So that's, that's the simple way to view a PDF, but like I said, the issue is you don't get any kind of ability to, to retain your branding and call to actions and so forth. So now we'll go into getting to the actual solution I wanted. This looks like the same solution we just saw. As you see, the PDF is embedded. Everything is great and wonderful. The only problem is, notice that link is no longer working. What I'm using is an iframe, and we'll look at the code of the control here in a second. But uh, once I started testing and playing, I found out that the iframe was extremely unreliable. Uh, in Chrome, it would have this behavior that you're seeing of once I displayed the PDF, some of the links on my page would no longer work. Some links would, some links wouldn't. Uh, Firefox, it seemed to work properly, i.e., you would never see the PDF at all. 
I I wouldn't see anything but a white box. Uh, some some users would see uh, that message offering them the opportunity to download the PDF. Uh, and Ben and I believe it was Andre or John on the uh, Skype forum gave me a hand and uh, did some testing with me to as we went through this thing trying to figure out why in the heck it wasn't working. You know, it it displays exactly what you want. Seemed like the right solution. It just it's not very browser reliable. Uh, and we'll look at the the code of it uh, first. Uh, it's a pop up page. Uh, this talk really isn't about pop up pages. Uh, once we get done, if uh, anyone has any questions about the pop up pages, I'll be happy to go into that. Uh, but the actual key to all this is this iframe control, which if we go to the creation tab, it's right there. And all the iframe control is, is th there's two types of HTML frames. There, there are the frame sets, which are the things that you hear everyone say don't use anymore uh, because uh, most of the search engines dislike them. Uh, some some browsers are starting to give users options to disable them. Uh, frame sets are the old way of doing things. Most of that you accomplish now with CCS or uh, CSS code, that sort of thing. Internal frames are still used and usable. Basically, it's the HTML version of an internal page. Uh, you, you have a frame. And you can display either a page of your project or a page from anywhere on the internet inside that frame. So I literally could take this and put and when you run this, you would see my website inside that page. So that's that's what internal frames are all about. Uh, you'll notice I have no settings on this because I, I am setting in the code. That's just the path to where the PDF lives. And then this is the iframe control. And all I'm doing is setting the URL to that path. And that's what causes that iframe to display that PDF. Uh, and then the button click is simply doing a pop-up display of that pop-up page. So that all looks properly. Like I said, the problem is you start running into browser compatibility issues. Uh, well, when I went out and started doing some Googling, I quickly found out that I was not the first person that tried to embed a PDF via the internal frame control. And I also found out that you shouldn't do it that way because it doesn't work. Uh, the right way to do it is, and an object tag, and if you do any amount of Googling, you'll quickly find code that looks like this here. And this percent sign one is where your URL <coughs> goes. And all it is is it's an HTML tag that lets you embed videos, sound, PDFs, those sort of things into your HTML page. And then this paragraph here, what this is for is if the web page does not have a viewer for the MIME type, you know, once again, we're used, we have that MIME type set up in here, then this paragraph here gets displayed, which tells them you don't have a PDF plugin for your browser, 
click here to download the file instead. And you could, of course, change that text and links to whatever you want. You could link to Adobe and say download a PDF viewer, you know, whatever you want to do. Uh, the pop-up page is identical to the one we had before, except now we're using an HTML control, which is this control here. An HTML control literally lets you put whatever HTML code you want on your page. Uh, I, <clears throat> in the coming weeks, uh, when we I start showing you some AWP stuff, I use uh, the HTML control for a lot of my next and previous buttons on. If I still have it up. Uh, back here. This next button, I'm using an HTML control to generate that link. And the reason why is because I'm generating a very browser friendly SEO search engine style link that you wouldn't normally get with a regular uh, link that you link to a page via web dev. So uh, that <clears throat> I'm, I'm just literally generating a bracket A yada 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 tag in an HTML control. So that, that's how you embed any kind of HTML that you want onto your page. So we put that HTML control exactly the same as we did the iframe control. And now the difference is we're actually setting that HTML control to that object tag HTML code that I showed you. Uh, I'm using the square brackets and the percent sign placeholders just to make life a little easier for me. And then I'm using the string build to stuff that PDF path everywhere percent sign one is. And then the actual button is the same as we saw. Pop-up display to display the pop-up page. And that one, when we run it, actually works and when we come back we can actually still click on our other buttons we haven't broke anything that's that's the my little journey down embedding a PDF directly inside your page uh, you know the the end result is some pretty simple code it was just the the search with the uh, trying to find out what is the proper way of doing it. So, any questions? We can open up the mics now, uh, Arnold. No, the, the mics are open. They just have to unmic uh, mute themselves. Oh, okay. That's that's pretty cool. Done silent. I, I'd I like lulled to... everyone in the... Yeah. Rob, do you have a question? Well, yeah. Yeah, Pete, uh, I think you just answered a question. I I had my uh, reports being built, and everything was working great. And then I think some uh, browser updates came through, and all of a sudden everything was not actually opening the PDF. It would download it and show it in the download, you know, that the file was downloaded, but it never opened it. You'd have to tell it to open. I have a feeling it's the iframe is messing that up oh, now. Oh, so you were using an iframe to display those? Yeah. Okay, yeah, 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 that's, yeah, uh, and if you switch like to this anymore. object tag, you'll, uh, you'll get around that. And, and probably in the future, that's exactly what I'm going to do with reports as well, is is display them, because the uh, I've always done reports before as using that file display. The problem is that it opens up in another tab, and half the time the user 
doesn't realize that it opened in another tab. So then they click on run the report two or three more times, and you know it, 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 it just it isn't a very good interface where if you open up a pop-up and, and display the PDF inside that frame, it's very obvious that, you know, because it actually is going to come up on their screen. Now, have you played with edible PDF? I had a PD, I had a report, and I, what I did was I put a, edit a box on the top of the PDF that was multi-line editable. Right. So when you created the PDF, it would then allow you to enter data. The only problem, when it translated to the PDF form of it, it wasn't multi-line. It only allowed you to do one line. And okay. I mean, I've, I, I haven't. I've dealt with I it with a pop-up window and stuff. Okay. I mean, I've got a solution which works. Yeah, you know, but. Gotcha. Yeah, I, I played with it briefly uh, for a project, but uh, we were doing pretty simple stuff. We didn't have any multi-line controls. That looks pretty good, pretty simple. I'll probably be doing that in the next day or so. <laughs> well, it's not only simple, I'm tired it's, of the kind of slick. it's kind of slick the way he has it in that pop-up. Yeah. yeah it, <clears throat> like I said, you know, the, the key to it all is to retain your site's branding and and so forth. So, so can you click on that thing again? Um, Which one? Uh, your the the final solution. So when you when you click on that, you determine the size of that PDF, right? So if somebody wanted yeah. to maximize that, can they get <clears throat> outside of that size? No, uh, you know this is you know a pop up that I just uh, set now. As you see here, they can go save it though if they want it. Right, right. You know those are the standard PDF viewer, and of course this is going to be slightly different depending on your browser. You know this is the Chrome built-in PDF viewer. Yeah, I mean that looks pretty clear even you know at the resolution you have your screen at. Um, right. Sometimes they want to see the whole page, and, and you can. Most of them have a search too, right? So you can do searches. Yeah. 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 Uh, actually, I don't think this has search in the built-in one. It, the built-in one is pretty limited. Um, what options you have? Yeah. See, that's one of the things I found that I had one that, that I needed to do searches, you know, for like some keys. And you know it's like a long document, so I just want to find. But these, when you were popping up, were like short paged. It'd be nice if there was a way that we could tell it not to use the built-in PDF viewer, because I have the same problem. Certain things you want to be able to search, and you can't the built-in view browse uh, viewers. Right. 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 I'm sure there's a way in the actual settings for the for the browser to say don't use but uh, yeah that, every time, that's every time the unfortunate world out. of you know browsers and you know you're you're at the mercy of whatever the user sets well the you know that's, that's the screen at 124768 which is you know our our target of making sure we stay on a 1024 768. Real quick, Pete, do you store the PDF on the client or the server side? Like when you build up the reports, does it automatically download to the client's computer or do you? Do know no, like I, I the, the, the reports, on the it, it generates on the server and then, you know, the file display is technically transferring it to the, uh, to the user's machine. Uh, but if they don't save it, it's just in that you know internet temp cache directory. Is so you, you're yeah. building on the server, you're transporting it, then you're deleting it off the server. I I delete it off the server once they move off of uh, the report. Yes. 
Well, once it's on their system, though, you can delete it because it's not it's it's in their memory. Well, I, 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 using a file display dialog, you're really never controlling. You know, I'm I'm not doing anything to transfer it to them or anything like that. I'm I'm literally just doing, you know, right. So Browse is doing it all, right? Well, where do you you said you delete it once they move off the page? Yeah, just you know, closing the closing the tab or logging out or what have you. Oh, so you do housekeeping when the tab is closed, do you just... Right, right. Okay. Yeah, there, there's a lot of ways to do it. Uh, some of my reports, you know, are... are uh, I just name the PDF using the user ID or something. That way, anytime they regenerate it, it uh, you know, it replaces the existing one, you know, that... Kind of depends on the situation. I don't have any hard and fast rule on how I handle that. Now these PDFs are all just set PDF data sheets. I I know ABB. I know what you're looking. Yeah, I know Inkbits and all that. Do you do any ge uh, report generating to PDFs? Not not for this site. Uh, okay. This this yeah, site is exclusive. all about displaying data sheets. Now we we did. For uh, J.K. Harris, uh, we generated a very complicated 20-page financial analysis PDF with graphs and all kinds of things that uh, we, we we generate through the page and then serve up to them. But the viewing is the same as what you're doing now. Yeah, yeah. Once once you have the PDF, sure, you can. Yeah. I just want to know because I generate. That's what I do with my reports. Is I generate the PDF, and I want to make sure if I <laughs> implement what right. you've done, it's going to work. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Good. Yeah. 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 You, once, once you once you have the PDF, uh, then you know it's just a matter of pointing the object tag at it. Uh, you, you you may have to play with where you locate that PDF so that the object tag can get at it. Oh, okay. I don't think I put them in anything that, weird. I think it's still in my yeah. my web, you know, directory. So yeah, well, that's that's where it gets a little tricky. Uh, whether you use an AWP or Dynamic Web Dev, because with Dynamic Web Dev, your URL doesn't translate directly quite the same. So you you have to play a little bit with the location to, to get a URL that's accessible to the web, you know, because dynamic web dev is doing everything through the shortcut URL and and not a true physical URL that's pointing to a physical drive location. <clears throat> but, but if you set up a directory to store every, all your PDFs and you just Make that as okay. I think I know what you're talking about. Don't trust on the sites. Right. Instance. Yeah. Yeah. You, you'll trust you'll have to create a uh, virtual directory. Fixed directory that you always say. Yeah. 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 I got gotcha. you. Makes sense. Because that not that. Yeah. We don't need to go into that. I got gotcha. you. Very cool. All right, that's uh, all I have for today. Like I said, light day. But, uh, just working back into it. Uh, but uh, I didn't have a coughing fit the entire session, so at least I'm, I'm back to health. Hey, Pete. Yes. If you're working on MIME types and showing documents, then there isn't any reason this couldn't show a spreadsheet or a Word document, correct? Right, and of course, uh, the, same technique. the reliability of it being viewable will fall down some uh, there. Sure. Simply because you you don't know, have as many people that have those type of viewers, but yeah, the theoretically, uh, you know, you can embed any kind of object uh, with that mime type, and what will happen is <coughs> this code will come into play if <coughs> if the browser does not have a plug-in to support that mime type 
this will be displayed. Okay. So you can you can put a an appropriate message in there. You know, the, <clears throat> the other thing this shows is okay. how easy it is to extend web dev with standard HTML type of things as well. Do you have another question there, Mark? No, that's good. Thanks. Okay. All right, well, unless anyone else has any other questions, I think we're uh, we're good, Arnold. Uh oh, Arnold dozed off on us again. Wakey, wakey. Oh, damn, my mute button. I was, I've been talking to myself. <laughs> oh, lordy. First time. <laughs> So anyway, a hey, thanks again for uh, restarting your uh, Uncle Pete's corner, and this is a, a nice start. So we'll see you. Yeah, next we, week, we maybe. will be getting into some AWP stuff in the uh, in the coming Two weeks. weeks. Uh, that 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 site that uh, you're seeing that uh, all of this is for is is pure AWP since it's uh, since it's a e-commerce site you know SEO is <coughs> is real important to us so we're having to use standard AWP so that everything can be seen by the search engine we're, we're using a lot of tricks to, to assist the search engines with stepping through the site and so forth tricks 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 okay uh, if nobody else has any questions, we gotta let Pete go cough his head off. No, I'm kidding. Hey, thanks, Pete. No problem. Okay. Talk to you guys later. Stop the recording now. Thanks everybody for coming. Stopping.